the academy really took a stopped and at, reflected on its work back in 2013, uh, which has a long distinguished history of looking at leading edge issues way back to the environmental issue before it was considered an issue and the population explosion uh, and the IT industry at its early stages and so forth. But like many institutions in the world, we had been looking at these things in as separate, the nuclear issue and so forth. We had been looking at them as separate, in separate dimensions. And in 2013, when we were invited by the United Nations office in Geneva to co-organize a conference of a few hundred diplomats, we chose as the topic for that, the need for a new paradigm in human affairs. And predominant topic of that conference was to look at the pressing global challenges confronting humanity. All of them we have discussed in one way or another during these sessions, the ecological challenges, the economic challenges, the political, the military security challenges, the social challenges, the problems of inequality, uh, and, uh, and particularly the challenge to the future of education. But once again, we tended to be looking at them each as an important component of some larger whole without really being very clear what that larger whole was or what the interrelationships between these challenges were. And so we embarked on a program for the last eight years, looking at each of these each of these issues in relation to all the others. We had a, a wonderful sessions on the role of individuality, which is a rare topic in, in the social sciences, the role of the individual in social change, the process of social change, the, the, cut, the, the process of mo the way we think and different types of creativity, the role of human values and ethics in social evolution. We've had a, for five years an international working group on new economic theory. The irony was out of our 50 members, more than half were not economists. They came from all different uh, uh, professions, looking at economy as an integral part of society. Obviously from an ecological point of view, from a political point of view, from a legal point of view, from a social point of view. We looked at the issue of social power, something that doesn't really fall within the frame of any specific social science, but we saw all of the activities in society are being governed by this invisible thing, uh, whether it's the economic activity or political activity or social activity or technological activity of where the power comes from in society. We looked at democracy. We looked at the role of culture, essential role of culture. We have two projects, ongoing projects on the financial sector and revolution in finance and the need for revolutionary change. We looked at global governance in just in the last two years, we undertook a project with the United Nations office in Geneva again on global leadership in the 21st century. And all of this was an attempt to try to put together and piece together the different elements that we had been examining and see the world is only one. The world doesn't lend itself to an easy fragmentation, even though we do it very well in our uh, academic disciplines. And what does this tell us about the future governance of the world? The advent of the pandemic, of course, made it so self-evident that it didn't require a discussion anymore. <laughs> because the pandemic presented us with a dilemma that covered virtually every issue that we had been studying over the previous eight years and showed it was not on anybody's security agenda. It was not on anybody's security budgets. It did not respect any borders or boundaries. It did not adhere to any uh, security strategies. And yet it made clear that these issues are all inseparable from one another. During the course of this, 
we took an important step with the help of Ishmael and uh, uh, with the IAUP as our founding members. We had a meeting in 2014 at the Library of Alexandria to found the World University Consortium, particularly because we had a sense, and a sense that I feel has been very much reinforced from our work since then, that education has a critical role to play in all these issues. And if we are going to do better in the future than we have in the past, education is the, the most organized conscious instrument we have for refining our responses as global society evolves so rapidly. And that led to four prior international conferences, the first at UC Berkeley, my alma mater, when the online education was just taking off, then in Rome, in Rio, in Belgrade, and finally after delay because of COVID, uh, this one. And what we've tried to do in this one covering a very vast area was not to look at all the pieces, but to see how all the elements of this fit together as one integral inseparable reality. And the solution to each of them depends on the others. Uh, and yet we put education as a central focus because we feel this is the institution which both from within the existing base, and it's very encouraging to hear about work like ASU is you doing, uh, the Qatar Foundation is doing, uh, University of the People is doing. Uh, we've looked a lot at the innovations that are emerging, but it was quite clear that all the innovations are just the tip of an iceberg. We are, we believe we're approaching a major disruption in the field of education, a key akin to what we have seen and is undergone in the field of finance now uh, in recent times, uh, when traditional financial institutions, traditional investment strategies, traditional monetary policies are all being challenged simply by the pressure uh, of rapid change and, uh, and, and the dynamics of the society. We don't predict or wish that we lose the great institutions of education. We feel that the opening up and experimentation and creativity and innovation in education is absolutely vital to leadership in the future. Much of that we hope will come from within the existing institutions. Much of it is already beginning to come from outside the existing institutions because it's a, a world's need, it's a global, aspiration. So our attempt in this meeting, you could call it an experiment, was to try to see how to, to understand this from the point of view of the whole, from the point of view of the whole of humanity, from the point of view of all of the sectors and dimensions of society, from the point of view of all the disciplines, from the point of view of global society, national society, institutions, and individuals, because in fact, they are not separate realities. We live in one uh, inseparable integrated reality. We've also tried uh, in, a, in more than before to go back to an inspiration of our founders who back in 1960 named this very consciously a World Academy of Art and Science. And it took us a lot of research to clarify what, why they did that and what they really meant by that. But it was very clear when we read back on the original documentation that the art, what they meant by the art was to recognize that the objective reality that we study through the, the, the natural sciences and the subjective reality of human emotions, human values, human aspirations, perceptions, uh, cultures uh, are two inseparable parts of reality. Uh, and true knowledge and true effectivity comes from a proper marriage and blend of them. And in education, we have gone a long way, a long distance away from 
the older tradition in which art and humanities and science and history and philosophy were looked at as integral elements. Uh, so much so that I was uh, participated in a conference which had one of the most respected leaders in technology in Western America, very famous for his books. He proudly came back from a, a meeting with 25 presidents of universities in California, the meeting was in California, and said that he had advised them to simply dispense with the humanities because it was obsolete and no longer uh, necessary. And that reminded me very much of, of how serious and important it is. What we need today and what we've heard from speakers in all our sessions is, and it was very eloquently expressed in this session, is the past, however rich it has been, cannot be our guide and uh, compass for the future. Uh, our past experience, even our past successes, we, we have to invent the future or think of discovered or discover the future, or we have to create it. And therefore our education is going to have to be much more in future, a creative process of envisioning, imagining, and creating the freedom of thought uh, and the instrumentation to use our mind differently rather than just to catalog and repeat what's been known in the past. 